Amen. All right. At this time, Brother Xander, if you'll come forward, brother, come give us what the Lord has placed upon your heart. Uh, I might need it. Just okay. thought if I need it there. All right. Usually I'm okay. But <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Before I forget, thank you for your hospitality. Um, it's been a real blessing to stay here and meet and get to know a lot of you, and the room has been great. And we leave here, and we're busy until we get back to Romania, and we cannot wait to get back there. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's... Start in Ephesians chapter 4. A couple weeks ago, or I guess it has been, time's gone by fast, but a couple Sunday nights ago I preached about not being forgotten. This message is going to be very different. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. That was a very encouraging message, uh, uplifting message. I hope it will be uplifting tonight too, but this will be a little bit harder. <laughs> so, that's... Uh, I, I always look at several messages, see what Lord I have, and what God puts in my heart. Yes. There we go. And, you know, I love preaching. I, I enjoy it. I truly, truly enjoy it. But, and I've been doing it for a lot of years. Um, but it's still a, a, a responsibility. It's still, I still get nervous, brother, even after sure. all these years. And that's a good thing, I think. Yes. Because you're preaching the Word of God, and my goal always is that God will be glorified, number one. Number two, that, that we would be helped, that I would be helped. Whatever I need, that the Lord would help me. So tonight, we're going to look at a generation that grieves the Holy Spirit. A generation that grieves the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, and I taught through the book of Ephesians. Um, so this is a message here in Ephesians 4.30 that I came across uh, when I was teaching in Romania here just a few months ago. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. We'll start there, and then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 3. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only place in the New Testament you find, grieve not the Holy Spirit. It's the only instance in the New Testament you find this. And as I looked at this passage of studying the Lord, what, what, what do you, what do you, what, had me to do it. You know, what do you want? I knew it was important. Grieving the Holy Spirit. We don't talk about that very much. The Holy Spirit's a, a silent member there that lives inside us and we kind of ignore him. So as I do my Bible, I'm a very simple teacher and preacher and study. I just look at the word grieved. What grieves God? Could I find an example in the Bible where God was grieved and what can we learn from it? What lesson is here? And I found it in Hebrews chapter 3. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Now, we're not going to look at the doctrinal aspect of this chapter, okay? And that's not, you can ask your pastor about that. <laughs> we're not going to do that tonight. Hebrews is a very difficult book. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, we're going to look at verse uh, 7 through 19. Um, there's at least two different interpretations doctrinally of this. Again, if you want to know, ask your pastor. If you, ask me, too. That's fine, because I have my idea. But anyway, so there's at least two, two ways you can interpret this doctrinally. But the brethren here doesn't apply to us. Either way, no matter how you interpret doctrinally, we're not, this doesn't doctrinally apply to us tonight. So that's not what we're doing tonight. We're going to use this as an example. I hope you'll give me that liberty to do that tonight. Because God was grieved here. And this is an example, I think a very good picture, image, of what God gets grieved at. And I think it'll help us realize, am I grieving God tonight? Now, a lot of the church, we've become like Pharisees. Really, we have. We're religious. We look nice. And we don't think, am I doing this? Is this me? Have I become cold and hard and just religious? Am I grieving the Holy Spirit? We're going to look at four things where God is grieved here in Hebrews chapter 3. Let's start in verse uh, 7. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 through 19, and then we will pray. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice, and it gives an example here, hear, uh, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. 
Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they should not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfastly unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. We're going to look at four things from this passage. How God was grieved, how the Spirit of God was grieved. And I think it'll help us tonight to examine our hearts. I helped me to examine my heart. I said, Adam, are you grieving the Spirit of God? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you we can come and study your word for just a few minutes and learn something. And Lord, hopefully become closer to you, better Christians tonight, better church members. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you'll do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So are we grieving the Holy Spirit? To grieve means to cause great distress or to give someone a heavy burden. The Holy Spirit lives in every child of God. You know that. You're, most of you here probably, well, hope you're good Bible students, but if you're saved tonight, you have the Holy Spirit, guaranteed. Yeah. All right? So we know we have the Holy Spirit, and He lives inside us. And we don't think of what we are doing, what we're looking at, what we're thinking on, is that grieving Him. He lives inside us. He goes where we go. You understand that? He lives inside us. And is it grieving him? And we don't, we don't ask that question. So here in Hebrews chapter 3, we have an example of Israel's unbelief and how it can apply to us. Here, God was grieved with Israel for 40 years. The primary reason was because of unbelief. Now, as I studied this, and I looked at Ephesians chapter 4, the first thought that came to my mind, grieving the Holy Spirit, the first, it might be the same thing that comes to your mind, was sin, right? I mean, that's, that's what I thought when I read that verse. The first thing that I thought that grieves the Holy Spirit is sin in my life, and that is true. That is the last point of this, of this little study tonight. So that's wonderful, but what leads up to that? What's the end? Yeah, sin grieves the Holy Spirit, but there's a progression here. There's a lot of progressions in the Bible, and this is one of them. So let's look at four things here. First, in verse 8 and verse 15, they hardened their heart. Verse 8, harden not your hearts. And then in verse 15, it says again, while it said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. They made a conscience decision to harden their hearts against the commandment of the Lord. He told them to go in, possess the land where they do. They refused. Right. And the lesson here in this chapter is very clear. We start grieving the Holy Spirit, number one, when we harden our hearts and stubbornly refuse to move in the direction God wants us to move. That's, right. That's the first step. Yes, it's a hard heart, stubbornly saying, I'm not going to do it. Now, unfortunately, I have a perfect example of this. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit wants to guide us, teach us, lead us, comfort us, convict us of sin. He wants to lead us in the right way. God loves us and cares for us. But we say, no, we're not going to do that. No way. I'm not doing it. Well, I happen to live with a three-year-old, almost four-year-old. Just close your ears. Now, this is hard, and she's a stubborn one. I don't want to do it. No. If you would have heard last night, you would have thought I was killing her, you know. But no, she just didn't want to do something. I don't want to do it. You're going to do it. She did it after 30 minutes, you know. So, you know, that's how we are. Yeah. We're like toddlers. Yeah. 
And you know, it's, it's been great, but it's been hard being a parent, but great on the sense that it's taught me, you know, this is how God probably sees me sometimes. How stubborn. I, and it's from, for my good. It's not even that hard. Reading my Bible, coming to church, praying, having a good attitude, being thankful. So yeah. simple. Yeah. It's not hard to do, and yet we say, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have a bad attitude today. Yeah. We do it. And the first step to grieving the Holy Spirit, I believe, is hardening our hearts and saying, no, I will not do it. It's, we no longer have a, t- a tender, attentive heart, and instead we have a hard heart, and that grieves the Spirit of God. So what kind of heart do we have? What kind of heart do I have? Do I have a tender heart that's movable when the Holy Spirit speaks and nudges me in the right way? Or do I hesitate, delay, argue, debate, and ultimately ignore the Holy Spirit and do what I want to do? That's a choice. See, he's trying to lead me and guide me. He said, Adam, you need to do this. And I said, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I don't think so. It's not a good idea. It's too hard. And then finally, I just say, forget it. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. Like a toddler does, you know, like a child does. Say, hey, come on, over here. And that's what we do. We harden our hearts and ultimately ignore the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. We have another example here of hard hearts. Now, you know, as I remember this, I thought, is this me? Surely not. (laughs) Surely not. I'm a missionary. I mean, come on. It can't be me. Mark chapter 3. I have a hard heart. Am I just a Pharisee? You need to ask. We need to ask ourselves that. We really do. I need to ask myself that. Mark chapter 3. The religious leaders in Jesus' time had a hard heart. They really didn't care for the people or for serving God in sincerity. Mark chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And he said to them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? Now, of course it's right to do good on the Sabbath day. Of course it's right to save a life. Are we hard-hearted? I mean... What do they say? But they held their peace. Can you imagine? They didn't do anything. Is it right to do right? Sure. They didn't do anything. Look what he said. And he's saying to them, is it in verse uh, 5, and we had looked round about, about on them. She's looking around. Anybody? Say something? No, nothing. And we looked round about on them with anger. That's another message in Ephesians. Righteous anger. There are times it's time to be right. That's a different message. Anyway. Being grieved around them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored at whole as the other. He was grieved with the hardness of their heart. Is, has that become us? Have we simply become religious, cold, and hard? And it can happen. It does happen. It happens to People sitting in the pew, it happens to pastors, it happens to missionaries, it happens to all of us. You get refused, life is hard, nobody wants to listen. You say, you know what, fine. Okay. No, that's a cold, hard heart that is no longer soft. And we need to repent of that. You say, no, that's wrong. Because that's grieving the Holy Spirit when we harden our heart and we say, no, I don't care anymore. No, I'm not going to do that. That's the first step to grieving the Holy Spirit. Number two tonight in Ephesians, or not Ephesians, Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. In verse 9 through 11, they tried and proved God, and they soon forgot his works. Hebrews chapter 9, or chapter 3, verse 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Verse 10. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. So number two, they tried to improve God and they forgot his works. God provided for them over and over and over, 40 years. And despite that, they complained and they tried God. And they soon, in the future, would forget the wonderful works he had done for them. And it grieved them. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart. And look what it says in the end. And they have not known my ways. How is that possible? 
He says, they have not known my ways. He taught them over and over, provided for them. And in the end, they have not known my ways. If I had seen the Red Sea parted, you know, the Jordan parted, if I had seen, you know, the walls fall flat, you know, in Jordan, it, I probably wouldn't forget, but they did. Just in a matter of generations, it's gone. So we say, so I ask myself, could that happen to me? Could I forget the works of God, and then it grieves him. And I say, yes, it does. It happens. We think, oh, I wouldn't do that. If God would show me that, I'd never forget it. And yet, what kind of attitude do we have? Do we have an attitude of faith, believing he get us through our troubles as he's done it before, or do we doubt, do we worry, do we fear that God can do it? Let's look at Psalm 78. Psalm 78. You know, God has done many things in my life, many things. I can look back at how he's just provided for this need or helped me through a really, really difficult time. But we forget so fast. We really forget. And then when we do, we doubt. And we say, Lord, can you really do it? And that grieves him. It hurts him. It hurts the Holy Spirit. It hurts God. And we say, I don't know, Lord, can you do it? And he's saying, I've done it before so many times. Adam, what's wrong with you? I just did it two months ago. And you're doubting me? It grieves the Holy Spirit when we have such an attitude. Psalms chapter 78, starting in verse 36. Psalms chapter 78, verse 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. Verse 40, how oft do they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from, his, from the enemy. Look how they limited the Holy One. They limited God. They would see the wonders and the power of God and then have a heart of unbelief and tempt God. And what was the result? They limited God. They limited God. So through their hard, unbelieving hearts, they limited God. Imagine the wonderful works and blessings God would have given Israel if they would have had a perfect heart with God. Imagine if they could have went into the promised land from the very beginning and not wasted that whole generation. See, we, I believe we limit God sometimes saying, you can't do it. You know, God wants to do so much more than we could possibly imagine. And God still blesses despite our hard hearts, despite our doubt, because we are but flesh, as the Scripture says. But it says it limited the Holy One of Israel. Isn't that amazing? How much more God can do? Look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. Our lack of faith in forgetting what God can do often limits what he can do and will do in our lives. We must reach far when serving and living for God in faith. He can do much, all right, but not, he can do much in our life, and we have to, we have to reach for it. But our sin. And our, our grieving God can, can limit that. We must not do that. And this leads to the third thing that grieves the Holy Spirit. And that is they had a heart of unbelief. That's the main thing here, a heart of unbelief. Look at, look at um, we're going to Matthew chapter 13. I'll read that in just a minute. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 3. I want to read verse 12. Hebrews 3. Let me get there. I'm trying 
trying to switch to another Bible, but I'm not brave enough yet. <laughs> Sticking my old one. My eyesight's getting bad. All right, Hebrews chapter 3, there it is. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So the third thing is they had a heart of unbelief. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, 58. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. They simply did not have faith that God could do what he said he would. Unbelief, a lack of faith, is something that really grieves the Lord. When we have no faith in God, we are saying he is not able. Okay? If my daughter says, no, Dad, you can't do it. What am I going to say? Well, I'm going to think, well, she thinks I can't do it. That's what I'm going to think. And we say, God, you can't. No, I don't believe you can do it. We're saying, God, you're not big enough. That's what we're saying. That's what unbelief is. That is what a lack of faith is. We don't believe he can give us victory over troubles, problems, and sins. But he can. We need to be like Abraham here in Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. Romans chapter 4. The third thing that grieves God, grieves the Holy Spirit, is a heart of unbelief. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. <clears throat> he was fully persuaded that God could do it. If it was you and I, we'd probably say, God, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. But he was fully persuaded. He says, God, you can do it. And that's an example of having faith towards God. The Bible says, faithful is he that calleth you who, who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go there. Hebrews 11. We need to ask ourselves tonight, are we grieving the Holy Spirit? It ends in sinning against God, but it leads up to a hard heart and a heart of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. <clears throat> but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek, seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. The Bible tells us clearly that we must come to him in faith. How can we expect God to do great things in our life if we come to him with a heart of unbelief? Now, the amazing thing is he often does do great things even when we have a heart of the unbelief. Lord, help thou mine unbelief. However, this should not be an excuse. It still grieves him when we doubt him. And we say, Lord, can you do it? It grieves him. It hurts him. You know, the Holy Spirit is a person. He lives inside you. And he sees what you do, and he wants to help you. But we grieve him by pushing him away, having a hard heart and a heart of unbelief. And number four, <clears throat> and this is the last thing that we that we hurt the Holy Spirit, that we, that we grieve the Holy Spirit. And that is uh, from the deceitfulness of sin. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. What was the end result here? It was sin. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. But exhort one another daily, why it was called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Verse 17, But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? 
Sin is very deceitful. It tells us, oh, it'll do no harm. It's fine. It won't hurt. But sin traps, and it's hard to get out. It's deceitful. And when we sin, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. Sin will in time harden our hearts to that which is pure and right and pleasing in the eyes of God. And we must guard our heart from sin, lest we become hardened through it. You see, it grieves the Holy Spirit when we sin against God. And in time, it'll harden us. It'll callous us. It'll push us away from that which is right. Sin in our heart and life is what we think first grieves the Holy Spirit of God. But, off, but really, it starts much, much earlier than that. Hebrews, or Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, verse 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. It says, the deceitful lust. Instead, we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We need to put on Christ and put away those deceitful lusts, because it hardens our heart, and that grieves God. So it starts with harden our, hardening our heart. When God says, the Holy Spirit says, go this way, and then we say, no, I'm not going to do it. That's the start. It's not sin. No, it's, that is sin, but the end result, it quickly goes, I'm not going to do it. No, Lord, I won't move that way. I don't believe you. I don't trust you. And that leads to sin. It's a progression. It gets worse and worse, and our heart becomes hard, and we grieve the Holy Spirit. And it's the same with lost people in this world. It's the same progression. They first reject God as their creator. They simply refuse to believe there is a God. And that's when I'm witnessing to someone, a little sidetrack, a little sidetrack here. When I'm witnessing with the first thing, do you believe there is a God? Because if you don't believe there's a God, we can't go any further. There's no use. There mu- the Bible must be true and there must be a God or we're done. Because, and it starts that way. I don't believe there's a God. And they simply refuse him and reject him. And then throughout their life, they sin. And most of the time it gets worse and their heart gets hard and they reject God. So I believe we're living in a generation, not maybe you tonight, but we're living in a generation that is grieving the Holy Spirit. I believe the church as a whole I'm talking about tonight is grieving the Holy Spirit. They might be saved, but what they see, their actions, their attitude are refusing to do what the Bible says, refusing to go in a way that is right. They say, I will not do it. They're like a toddler. I will not. I will not. I will not believe your word. I won't believe what you've done in my life in the past, a light of life of doubt, and then finally sin in their hearts. And it's a generation that's grieving God, and it must, it must cause him much pain and hurt to see that he wants to help them and lead them in the right way. And their hearts are hard, and they grieve the Holy Spirit. We, we forget the Holy Spirit can be grieved, and he wants to use me He wants to use you, but if I'm grieving him, it's limiting what God can do. It really can't. God can do so much more in my life if I don't grieve him. (laughs) If I believe him and stop being so hard-hearted and get sin out of my life, right? I can do so much more than if I stay grieving the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Let's examine our hearts tonight. 
and see if we're grieving the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes, we're going to heaven. We're sealed. We know that tonight. We know our eternal salvation is secure. But meanwhile, okay, in the meantime, while we're still here in this body, are we grieving the Holy Spirit? Why we're, you know, why we're still here on earth? I really hope not tonight. I hope that we have a heart that's soft and tender towards the things of God, a heart that has a, a heart of belief yes. and a pure heart that wants to serve the Lord. It's not grieving Him. Yes. So let's get close to the Holy Spirit and ask Him, am I grieving you? And maybe, maybe we're not. Maybe we're doing something we don't even realize we're grieving Him. It happens. It's happened to me. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. And let's, we need to get that, get that right so we can serve God even better. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray tonight. Well, thank you for tonight. Thank you that we can um, just learn a little bit from your word. And I hope that, Lord, we're not grieving you. I hope I'm not grieving you, Lord. And uh, I want to be a better Christian, a better missionary, and a better man, husband, Lord, and minister. And Lord, help us, Lord, to uh, examine our hearts and follow you and have a soft heart that's willing to do whatever you tell us to do and Lord help us to have a pure heart that's one to serve you and Lord help us to uh, do what's right and we'll thank you Lord for the rest of this week I pray you a blessed Sunday in Jesus name we pray amen I'll tell you how the Lord works yesterday morning I was doing my morning devotion and I started reading through the book of Hebrews and when I'm reading through my Bible I always keep a notebook and a pen on the side so I could jot down things that I could come back to late later uh, ideas for messages and when I was reading through Hebrews chapter 3 I wrote down a note in my notebook to prepare a message on uh, the generation that grieved God just just yesterday morning and so um yeah, uh, I, I started working on an outline, and uh, Brother Xander helped me to finish put that put it, put put that outline together tonight. Amen. So I'm going to wait till you guys forget about this message tonight, so I can preach it again sometime down the road. You know how it is. People ain't paying attention half the time, anyways. But no, no, I, I think that was a very good message. Very good message. Um, Something very serious that we need to consider. Um, are there some things in our lives that could very possibly be grieving the Holy Ghost? Now, he lives within us. The brother explained it. I don't need to re-preach it. But, uh, but like the brother said, I mean, he, the Holy Spirit, this, that same Holy Spirit that guarantees the security of our salvation. Thank God for that. But are we grieving the Holy Ghost? And I, I appreciate what the brother said about uh, uh, limiting the Holy One of Israel. Listen, I, I believe with all, with all my heart, God can do amazing things. God can do, a, you know, when, I, when we read this Bible, when you read this Bible, you have to agree with me on this, that the God that we read about in this Bible is a whole lot bigger than what we're used to seeing. I mean, think about it. He creates a human being out of the dust of the earth, brings, breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. That's amazing. He parted the Red Sea. Did that actually happen? Amen. Absolutely it did. The walls of Jericho, did they really fall down on the ground? Did God really do that? You know he did. And we can go on and on. All the miracles Jesus did while he was here, healing the sick, raising the dead. He rose himself from the grave three days later after being crucified. You know all this stuff. I'm telling you, the God that we read about is a whole lot bigger than what most of us are used to. And I, I, I really believe that we could experience a whole lot more of this God that we read about if we just would believe it more. I believe, I really believe when we get to heaven, we're going to realize that there was a whole lot that we missed out on simply because our faith was just too puny. That's right. That's right. I know it wasn't a shouting message and all this, but it was a very good Bible message. 
Very good Bible message. And uh, I appreciate the brother, uh, fo you know, following the Lord's direction. And it, it challenged my heart. And I hope that your heart was challenged as well. These are things that we need to be uh, mindful of. Are there things in our lives that, may, that are grieving the Holy Ghost? I'm telling you, you're not going to get where you... Uh, need to be spiritually and you're not going to experience what you could experience as far as the things that God would like to do in your life. You'd be surprised with what God is able to do in your life and through your life if you would just believe it. I'm not talking about some hocus pocus bunch of baloney. I'm, I'm, you know, and there's dispensational things. I get all that, you know, the miracles and all this. There, there's di look, we're dispensation, we're dispensationalists. I understand all that. I'm just saying that our God is just as powerful today as He was the day that He parted the Red Sea. Amen. Do you really believe God can save sinners? I know He can. Do you really believe God can work in your family? Do you really believe God can provide that need? Do you really believe? Maybe the reason why you're not seeing God work as much as God is able to work is simply because you don't have enough faith to believe it. But we need to grow in our faith. Living by faith in Jesus above. Let's all stand. Good message. Good message. Thank you for that, Brother Xander. I almost want, want to preach it all over again. That was very good. I wrote that down yesterday morning in my, note, uh, in my notebook. The generation that grieved God, Hebrews chapter 3. You stole my message, brother. <laughs> but uh, that was a blessing. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Brother Xander, for ministering to us tonight. Let's be uh, mindful of what the brother preached. Uh, sing with me, if you would, please. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Matthew, why don't you close our service with prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for your infinite grace and mercy. Lord, you know we grieve you often. We fail often in our service towards you. Lord, and you are so merciful and so gracious to us, even though we don't deserve it. And we thank you for it and glorify your name for it. Lord, I ask that you would help us each and every one to be better than we are now. I ask you to help us to remember this message. I ask you to bless us throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.